Hello. Well, today I am here to talk about the 12th film, the latest film in the Friday the 13th franchise, which is Friday the 13th, uh, the reboot that came out in 2009. Let's get, or get it, get it all. Here's the back. And here is the alternative cover, front and back. So it's a hockey mask, and there you go. Same uh, disc if you just bought this film originally, uh, as it's on its own back uh, in 2009. Uh, and I have it. I actually have this movie now three times, individually the first time, with the original first uh, 12 movie pack set, and then now with this film, this version. Um... Yeah, so, a lot of people seem to be very split regarding this film, um, and uh, I can definitely understand why that is. Um, you know, the being a reboot... In not a continuation from Freddy vs. Jason being a sequel or just another brand new film which does reference the events of that film um, or any sort of continuation doesn't I guess have to you know mention Freddy vs. Jason um, though I'm sure people would like some mention of it um, in any sort of sequel. Um, but yeah, this film is a reboot. Um, obviously, in the 2000s, reboots and remakes, reimaginings, whatever you could call them, were huge with horror. Um, you know, it was a time where there were so many remakes, remakes of classic films that were 20, 30, maybe even 40 years old, I guess depending on the movie, depending on the time of uh, new versions release of that remake. Um, the guy who directed this did a uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. Um, I remember seeing that when I was very younger, and you know, it, I enjoyed it. Um, not better than the original, but you know, I do enjoy. I enjoyed that film, and uh, when it comes to this movie, um, I like this. Uh, quite a bit. I think of all the horror remakes and reboots, I think this is like the best, or at least one of the best. Uh, I mean, you'd have to really, I guess I'd have to look at all the remakes and re reboots of horror films, classic horror films, films that are just classic on their own, some that are part of a franchise. And, uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, I don't really, uh, have a huge major problem with this film. Um, I will say, though, uh, amongst the various criticisms, you know, there's some stock characters, you know, uh, I'm not gonna say there aren't classic, uh, you know, slut, uh, Kind of the idiot friend, the guy who's a 
a real pain in who you just want to see uh, die, and when they die, you hope it's very brutal. Um, and, and other characters of the sort in this, in this uh, not just franchise, but just genre in general. So, you know, this is the 12th film. This is a reboot because it takes elements of the first four films and, uh, yeah, one of the first things you see in the film is, uh, Mrs. Voorhees, uh, chasing a camp counselor. She's got a knife and the counselor has a machete. She goes to try and stab the <clears throat> counselor and then she gets her head cut off, just like at the end of the first film. Spoilers, but at this point, I kind of been spoiling things <laughs> for all the films to some degree, at least. Um, uh, you know, so there's the part one reference, and also you see young Jason. He witnessed it, um, sort of backing up what was said, like in part two. He must have seen his mother killed. And then you see uh, Jason with a bag over his head to part two. You see him then get his hockey mask, part three. And then with part four, there are siblings. Uh, you know, there's Whitney, you know, her, at, she and her friends at the beginning of the film after the Mrs. Voorhees stuff happens. Um, she and her friends are at the camp going around and, you know, just have a good time. A couple of them are to are looking for specifically for weed <laughs> you know and uh, one of them finds it but then Jason's there kills him and then from there uh, Whitney's friends you know get killed including uh, her boyfriend and uh, find a locket that is in a, like a old house uh, like a, that Jason is in back in Voorhees' house. And, uh, there's a locket with, uh, Mrs. Voorhees and her, uh, her boyfriend said that she kind of looks like her. And then, later on, we see that uh, she's not killed, but is alive, and that's part of the reason. In a way, she reminds him of his mom, so he's not going to uh, kill her. All the while, her brother, Clay, is looking for her, and he sees uh, some various people around town, and a group of teens going to dude's uh, rich parent's house by the lake, and, uh, you know, to have a good time, good weekend and all, and, uh, which is a reference to part four, definitely. Um, you know, reference to Rob and Sandra, though, you know, you know, he's looking for his sister, though in the part four, Rob was looking for Jason to kill because Jason killed his sister in two. Um, so there's a sibling looking for somebody, though, of course, in this film, it's the sibling looking for the sibling. You know, he doesn't believe that she would have just ran off with her boyfriend because her mother was sick, and up until she left for a weekend, she had been taking care of her for a long time. You know, I had a cancer, and then she dies. And, uh, yeah. So... It's one reason he doesn't believe uh, that she ran off, whereas some of the local authorities think so. That's quite possible what happened, though he tells this to one cop, so, you know. The big thing is he's often uh, putting up missing posters. That's really it. He's looking for any information he can about his sister. Um, and he meets some interesting characters, one of which is a guy who has been, like, uh, 
working uh, all these places in the uh, gets killed in a deleted scene he wore a hockey mask and that's how uh, Jason got it. He goes and finds, sees him and he cuts off his head, takes the hockey mask off and takes the hood off and puts it on. Now in this, you know, in the final version of the film, both a theatrical and extended cut, because there are two cuts on this disc, just like uh, the previous Blu-ray and the DVD. Um, now the, uh, Uh, he sees a uh, dude, Jason's going around, taking stuff from like, the barn, and uh, he's uh, getting a bit of a scuffle, and he rips his uh, uh, mask, and then he sees what he looks like, and he's like, that's just not right, and then he, Jason promptly kills him. He looks at his uh, bag that he had, and then it's like ripped. And then he's, he sees a hockey mask not too far, not or nearby, and he wears that. And that's how he gets his hockey mask for the film. Um, the, and you know, from there, a lot of killing, uh, a lot of killings happen. Um, and yeah, the uh, sort of just various references to the first four films, um, which a lot of people hail highly amongst the fan base, uh, myself included. Um, you know, those four were, uh, are truly uh, incredible movies. Um, tell a good storyline. I guess the Paramount era does tell a good storyline. Um, Though the first four, I think, are a bit better. Um, even though two through four were within like the same week. Um, yeah. Also, I guess Clay and Whitney could be a, also a reference to Tommy and Trish in uh, part four, you know, the final chapter. Um, you know. Just another uh, something uh, else to throw out there, uh, like they could be like a composite of a uh, uh, couple prominent uh, siblings of those first four films, you know. Uh, so Robin's Sandra and uh, Tommy and Trish. But yeah, um, up this movie, you know, it's a, uh, of course it's a reboot, so, you know, I don't mind it, um, as I've said, I, and because I think uh, one reason I don't mind it is because, uh, well, I guess there's a couple of reasons, um, aside from the fact that of all the various horror film remakes and reboots, you know, I do think that this film does, uh, handle the material the best, as so, like I mentioned earlier, but I also saw this in the theater in 2009. Um, I was 14, you know, the 15 uh, later that May. Saw it with a friend of mine. My mom also took uh, took us because you know, you're 14 and all, you not 17, you can't uh, see an R-rated film here in America. If you're on the under 17 so you know and there's a lot of violence a lot of blood nudity you know as it says radar for strong bloody bloody violence and graphic sexual content language and drug material doesn't make complete daughter sense that uh you know they uh don't say nudity, but I guess with the whole graphic part of it, I guess that's sort of implied. Um, but yeah, um, this again has just the same old stuff in terms of the um, 
original release of this film on Blu-ray. In terms of other content, like special features. Um, but yeah, another reason that aside from that is you know it's, you know it's my first film in the franchise that I saw on the big screen. Really enjoyed it. Friend enjoyed it also. My mom did too. Um, and um, so that definitely holds. Uh, that it makes it quite special to a, a good extent for me, and that I would. It's the first film in the franchise I saw in, in theaters. Um, of course, I saw last year the original for its 40th anniversary. Um, but yeah, prior to that, you know, just waiting for like a sequel or a new movie, you know, after this film, which hasn't happened, and you know, because of the lawsuit, it'll take longer to happen. Um, but yeah, this film is a. Uh, yeah, I do believe it, t it takes um, it takes various elements early in the franchise. Takes those elements and puts them in modern day, <clears throat> uh, or at least as modern day as 2008, 2009, you know, would be. <clears throat> and uh, they, you know, they. They just give a Friday the Thirteenth film. Um, really, this does feel like a Friday the Thirteenth film to me, just in modern day. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, I know there are people who love the '80s aesthetic and look, you know, the look and the sort of feel that those films have. Very '80s. I understand that. I get it. Um, but it's also nice to have sort of familiar elements but updated um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that um, for some there it just didn't you know didn't do anything for them sort of I guess same thing in many ways like with other remakes or reboots of the time uh, for the genre and um, yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know. And over the years watching it, it's just grown on me. Um, it's just, uh, <clears throat> amongst the other things, like the, being the first of the franchise to see in a theater and thinking it just honors the first four films very well, having moments that sort of echo uh, those films, uh, certain types of characters like siblings and such, and I don't know. It just it just works for me. I know there are people who don't like this movie, and that's fine. Um, of course, if people are new to this franchise, they might may enjoy it. Um, the Though, for me, you know, having seen the other movies also, you know, before this film as a teenager, you know, 12, 13 year old, somewhere around there, I saw these films for the first time. I just love, uh, yeah, I just love these films, you know, and even in the course of talking about all these films, you know, some of the movies I'm not as fond of, I there are elements of those movies I would rank, you know, in terms of a list where I would rank them, I guess, worst to best. Even where I would rank real low in the worst section, I still find elements to enjoy. And I find many elements to, uh, to enjoy, you know, the character of Chewie, for instance. Uh, he's great. Um, played by... Aaron Yu, yo, <clears throat> you know, he, uh, he's somebody who's a standout and that even the critics praised him. You know, critics really blame Bass this franchise. Yeah, he, for his performance, was praised. You know, he was more like the <clears throat> comedic type of character. But he was very well, he was done, handled real well. 
Jared Padalecki is in this film. Daniel Panabaker, Travis Van Winkle. Winkle. Um, you know, I think the cast overall does a really good job. You know, you know. Derek Mears as Jason Voorhees. Um, <clears throat> now he's great. He, 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 you know, I think he does a really good job with the character, with his take on it. He had a contract to do two films, uh, but it looks like he won't get to do the sequel, unfortunately. Because um, he did a really good job. Um, unless, of course, uh, things clear up real soon and they're able to get a movie greenlit and you know script is approved and all those ago and. Uh, they ask if he wants to be back, and he says yes. Then all right. Um, but yeah, he he does a good job, uh, I think. Um, I I like uh, I don't know. I just like the sort of the feel and the of this film. It's to me, it's familiar yet new. You know the various familiar elements of the movie. Like of the franchise prior, I think there, that spirit is in this movie, but it's also new. It's a new take, and it's really good in my opinion. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't have a whole lot of to, uh, of complaints for this film. Um, the praises I have, I've already sung, and you know, might be sound generic or very like unenthused or what have you, but. Really, it's a it's it's really good. It's a fine film, especially when you look at the various remakes and reboots of horror films of the time. I think it's better than Halloween remake, Nightmare on Elm Street remake. And even though I like and uh, or enjoy the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I think this is better. Um, the director is um, Marcus Nespel. He directed Texas Chainsaw Massacre also. Uh, Damian Shannon and Mark Swift wrote the script. And they co-wrote the story with Mark Wheaton. Michael Bay uh, produced this film. I know there are a lot of people who seem to dislike it. Just amongst various other things, you know, Michael Bay as a producer, you know, a lot of things like Michael Bay does, people don't like. Oh, well, really? There aren't uh, any explosions um, in this film, though. Um, some gunshots. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. And and again, he's just a producer. You know, Platinum Dunes. Yeah. It's a production company with New Line and Paramount. You know, it's the first time they actually ever worked together. And you know, like. One handled, handled uh, the domestic uh, <clears throat> or, uh, you know, American box office or, or distribution, I should say, domestic, then one handled international. So they both have share credits. It's like, you know, it's a joint effort of New Line Cinema and Paramount Pictures for the first time in very likely the only time. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of cool how uh, at one point these two couldn't come together to make Freddy vs. Jason in the 80s. Uh, Paramount sold Jason to New Line. They made three movies, and then Paramount comes to help them with their fourth film in a way. Like, in terms of distributing the film, so I think it's pretty cool, honestly, that this was all able to happen. Um, it's just interesting how how things have changed and how you know, uh, you know you know I'm sure Paramount also nowadays with the people in charge just sees how uh, 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 financially successful the fr franchise was, so any opportunity they 
could uh, have to get the franchise back or be part of it in any way. No doubt they, uh, they jumped on any and whatever uh, opportunity came their way. You know, I'm sure negotiations and all happened, but in the end, uh, they were able to come together, and that's really cool. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, though, Paramount was able to get the rights back, but then they took forever to make a sequel, and this was even before uh, the whole lawsuit thing came into the picture. And I've talked about the lawsuit quite a bit already. But, yeah, it's just unfortunate that this... You know, it's interesting for a sequel. It could have been interesting, I think. Um... Apparently was going to reveal what happened at the very end of the film is, you know, sort of a culmination of the first three films in that there's sort of a jump scare and you don't, oh no, what, what, but then there's no, like, payoff in that, oh, they wake up or whatever and all is well, you know, you know that doesn't happen, so it's like, that was... That was definitely interesting, so I guess there was a plan, but, you know, they wrote the script, but, you know, we'll never know what happened, because uh, uh, that script was never produced. So, yeah, um, overall, that's my thoughts. Uh, I really enjoy this film. Uh you know, I'm not saying it's the best of the franchise, but I don't think it's all that horrible. You know, <clears throat> a lot of people just, you know, just dismiss this film outright as just a reboot. You know, some call it a remake, though it's not a remake. If it was, Jason would just be a kid uh, in it, in flashbacks, and probably at the end of the film. But, you know, it's it's... You know, if you haven't seen this film in a while, maybe give it another watch. You know, I'm not saying you're going to love it or anything, but, you know, it's it's not a horrible movie. It's a film that is, is quite good in its own right. I think it honors the first four films uh, very well. Um, and again, that's all me. You know, it could be I'm one of the few people who might think that. Um... Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, I think it's one of the best reboots of its time. Um, I guess reboots are still a thing, but, you know, I guess that's neither here or there, but, yeah, this is a fine film, you know, it's, it's, it's grown on me, watch it every so often, it's always fun. At least I think so. It's fun to watch. I never think it's boring. And, and that's always important, you know. If the film is boring, it's then failed to do its job. Uh, you know, it should be entertaining. And, and, uh, and these films are entertaining, even some of the weaker entries. Um, so, overall, that's really it in terms of the individual films. Um, I will make one more video, um, but it will be about various documentaries, um, and I guess overall thoughts, if I think of any that maybe I might want to sort of include that maybe I might have missed out on, uh, glossed over, just didn't think of in the, in the making of all these videos individually, um. So, yeah, um, I hope this has been an interesting video, as have the others <laughs> prior to this. Uh, I, this was really fun to do, and um, I can't wait to finish it up with the next one. Uh, so, I hope you all have a great day, hope you all have a great week, and a great weekend.
and I'll see you all next time.